And the market share of EVs is about 7%, which is about double what it was last year. The problem is that demand for EVs is not keeping up with production, right? You have you know, all the automakers introducing these new products this year. There's a lot more coming next year. Um, and you know, when you look at some of the barriers like price, range, and uh, charging infrastructures, you know, getting early adopters to buy your product is one thing. That's easy. Getting mass adoption is a whole lot harder. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. One of Tesla's customers just signaled to the world that Tesla's mega packs are going to help boost its profits dramatically here in the coming years. It should go without saying, but in this renewable transition, many companies that are looking to rethink their business model, they're all asking one question, what do the financials or the economics look like? In case you forgot about the actual project when we first talked about it, Neowin is looking to build a massive four hour battery in Western Australia near the town of Cauley. Initially, the first phase, 877 megawatt hours divided by roughly four megawatt hours per Tesla mega pack, and that's about 220 Tesla mega packs. But let's say this project does scale to the expected four gigawatt hour number. That's four and a half times bigger than phase one. So if this entire project were to use Tesla mega packs, which is certainly an option, you would take the number of mega packs for phase one, multiply that by 4.5, this project in total could be pushing 1,000 Tesla megapacks. Times about $2 million per megapack, this project alone could bring Tesla almost $2 billion. Throw on a 25% margin and that would generate Tesla almost a half a billion dollars. In an announcement from Neowen, they lifted their forecast for operating earnings in 2025 by about $160 million per year. And while Neowen said not all of that profit derived from the battery deal given the short time frame it suggests it accounts for a large part without getting into specifics if you hear about one of the bigger challenges in the shift to renewables being a solar duck curve it's really just the fall of minimum demand levels during a certain time of the day that this project specifically is supposed to help smooth out and essentially elevate this was a super helpful infographic so just think if the system load in terms of megawatts drops below roughly 600 megawatts at a certain time of the day it leads to a potential for grid instability so this project with tesla is expected to help boost these minimal demand levels during the middle of the day this project between tesla and the owen is set to come online in 2025 and is likely to be one of the most profitable assets in the owen's portfolio the Neowen CEO just said batteries usually deliver higher returns than wind and solar farms, and Neowen is looking at a target IRR for this project at the higher end of its range around 8.5%. Getting as close as possible to 10%, and these batteries are meant to deliver better IRRs than the wind and solar projects. This is a slow moving industry. Projects take years to develop and go through discussions. However, as more and more companies look to Neowen as kind of a leader in the renewable transition, and they look at their portfolio and say one of their most profitable projects is a battery energy storage system using Tesla mega packs, what do you think is going to happen? And perhaps equally as important, this isn't just selling some products at a great profit, it's also going to be solving real problems. Just think of the duck. Last thing I'll say, this one project, if it does hit four gigawatt hours using all Tesla mega packs and using our very rough napkin math, it would translate to about 15 cents per share in earnings for Tesla from one project. I wanted to spend some time on this because plenty of people in the Tesla space still do not appreciate Tesla energy, nor do they really get excited by it. I understand it's not as consumer facing. However, from an investor standpoint, the future looks incredibly bright. You can now earn referral credits through offering up demo drives to other people. You're not going to earn very many credits. However, I really like this one because like we always talk about, good things happen when you get new butts into Tesla seats. We can explain things and talk about Tesla until we're blue in the face, but oftentimes the best thing we can do is get somebody into a Tesla, let them experience 
experience it for themselves. You'll only earn 100 credits, but if the demo drive is a success, you'll automatically earn referral credits when they buy their new Tesla. One more tool in our support the movement kit. When you click on someone's demo drive link, you choose the vehicle you're interested in, plug in your nearest location, and you're off. Speaking of butts in seats, you guys haven't seen Ashley in a while, so I figured it was time for her to make an appearance. We got her an adjustable standing desk from FlexiSpot that she's been loving, and fast forward to now, you guessed it, FlexiSpot is sponsoring this video. True story. I remember I was going to record some footage of her putting the desk together for her channel, but she assembled the entire desk in about 15 minutes, and I missed the entire thing, so my bad but clearly it's a breeze to assemble. I literally did not help her do it at all. Ashley wanted an affordable standing desk after watching me stand to edit videos the past few years while I myofascial release my feet. The desk we chose is the FlexiSpot Comhar standing desk with a glass top, but you can of course customize your desk finishes, setup, and accessories. Ashley's, for example, has a drawer that her old desk did not have, as well as three USB ports conveniently built in right on the front and out of the way. This one has memory presets for the height adjustment, or you can just use the arrows to set it exactly where you want it each time. It's quiet and smooth, exactly how you'd want it. I did go ahead and put it through some intense, unnecessary testing as well, and it passed with flying colors. Ash loves the flexibility of sitting or standing and she's been pleased with the durability and stability even when the desk is raised. We're big on value in the Loomis household and for the money we both agree this is a great value. Even if you're not ready for a desk now, save this video and the link below and when the time comes you can get 10% off a purchase over $300 with my code electrified. The link will be below. Enjoy. Here we have a few shots of Project Highland sightings. These ones are from Neil. Let me know if you guys wanna keep seeing these. I know at some point it's like, all right, we've seen this enough already, especially when it's tough to point out anything new. But for now, there you have it. The Tesla negotiations with India are still underway. Two senior Tesla execs discussed the company's plans to enter India with officials from the country's investment promotion arm. Tesla's business development executive Rohan Patel and vice president for the supply chain Roshan Thomas are currently in New Delhi and met officials from the Invest India agency. They both met with Invest India's CEO Nivruti Rai and they held talks yesterday on Thursday. Per the usual, they this is just a report on that it's happening, not what exactly is happening, but we know the conversations are most likely centered around the EV factory and setting up a supply chain for Tesla in the area. This is one I'd be very curious to get your thoughts on because I can definitely see both sides. Four Republican senators are seeking to reverse a Biden administration decision to waive the Buy America requirements for government-funded EV charging stations. The law? To get the federal money, these EV charging companies must obtain at least 55% of construction materials like iron and steel from domestic sources and be totally made in the United States. The sourcing requirements go into effect summer of 2024. However, on the other side of the coin, you have some EV charging companies saying it's difficult, if not impossible, possible to meet these made in America standards to expedite the construction of new chargers. Saying wait times for some electrical components ranged from 60 to 80 weeks without considering the increased demand created by new federal funding. Almost a two year delay for some of these electrical components. So which side would you lean toward? Allowing people to buy the components now from elsewhere to get these chargers up and running faster or enforce those stricter requirements from sourcing from the US and maybe actually delay the rollout of these charging stations. We've touched on this location a few times the past few weeks, but they had their grand opening ceremony, so now officially open, Tesla's first purpose-built facility in Canada. It's a 35,000 square foot facility, 31,000 of which will be for a service area. Given this location should be able to handle any type of service, the few of you on Vancouver Island who have been traveling for service, hopefully those travel days are over. Esther again sharing some pictures of the fifth V4 supercharging station in the world, this one in Rennes, France. 
That's three V4 stations open this week. Still no word on boosting the speeds up past 250 kilowatts. I'm only sharing this one because I know some of you are near the Austin area and there was a lot of commotion and traffic around Giga Texas this morning. It was a false alarm for an active shooter. It's a weird story, but the short takeaway, they found nothing out of the ordinary, no casualties, no sounds of gunfire, nothing to substantiate the presence of a shooter at all. To put it on your radar, Porsche has been rolling out these lounges or charging hubs in the European market. And the question becomes, will they roll this out in the States? Maybe when they have more EVs actually available. This lounge in particular has six 300 kilowatt DC fast charging stalls, but more on that in a second. These lounges are open 24 seven, offering spacious and luxurious interiors stocked with snacks and soft drinks. They do have some neat features for entry into the lounge. Not just anybody can walk in. One example being automatic license plate recognition systems that let the cars in. This lounge actually has one of those smart workout mirrors for anybody looking for a quick pump. Porsche is rolling these out in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland so far. And when it comes to these lounges, now Porsche is talking about by the start of next year, 2024, 400 kilowatts should be possible. I want to highlight a few things from a recent RJ Scaringe interview with Heatmap. RJ was talking about how buying an ice powered vehicle is sort of like building a horse barn in 1910, just buying a product that really has no future in our society. And he said, I think we're one product cycle away from that really driving consumer demand. The thought process of, I don't wanna buy something that's going to be a relic of the past. RJ is guessing this shift in consumer sentiment could happen toward the end of this decade. Thinking about standing out like the weird person still driving an ice vehicle, it's just gonna swing really fast. RJ's answer to the biggest hurdle to electrification right now, consumer choice, not enough EVs available in different price points, <laughs> obvious answer. RJ confirmed with the R2 program, they're still tracking for 40 to $45,000 in that neighborhood. The latest timing for the R2 platform coming to the market beginning of 2026. On the R2 platform, RJ said there's been a dramatic focus on part simplification, joint simplification, and manufacturability. So it's a very, very different architecture than what we did on the R1. VinFast has not been deterred by a questionable North American rollout. They're officially starting construction on their first manufacturing facility outside of Vietnam, this one 30 miles southwest of Raleigh. The plan is to open in 2025 with an initial production capacity of 150,000 vehicles per year. Honestly, I wasn't sure this one was going to happen, but now it'll definitely be something to watch. Just a quick fun fact, in the last year alone, most likely due to the introduction of the IRA, there have been $72 billion of new announcements for battery factories and EV manufacturing plants. We won't get into the detail of this one. We've talked over the past few weeks about the resetting going on in the Chinese EV market, new partnerships, companies pulling back, others doubling down. There's a lot changing. But I had to share, Tesla was the only foreign brand to take share in the first half of this year, topping BMW in popularity. And just as a reminder, the conversation point still needs to be said. Many of these Chinese automakers that may be seeing increases in share or market share Many remain unprofitable, but they have the ability to play the long game, being funded in some part by the government. The COO of Kia China said, we allow our enemies to fight first and we will come back with bags of money and technologies to take them. And the Germans who are being squeezed on both sides by the Chinese competition and Tesla, the three luxury brands managed to hold share flat in China in the first half of this year after some dealer discounts that topped 25%. Don't forget to check out FlexiSpot linked below. Save that video, save the coupon code for the future, share it with a family or friend. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.